In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I greatly sin in my thoughts and my words, what I've done and what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, the most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary a Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, <clears throat> and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Together. We proclaim, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seen at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our might, and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, a prophet like me will the Lord, your God, rise up for you from among his own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord, your God, at Horeb, on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord, our God, nor see the great fire anymore, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Responsorial Psalm. If today you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing songs to him. If today you will hear his voice, Pardon not your hearts. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts at Meribah as in the day of Messiah in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. 
If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts.
When one speaks with authority, one is grounded in what they're saying. One is grounded in what is going to spread and going to lift up people. That's why there, he taught them with authority. And the scribes and Pharisees are astonished. Because no one ever would have talked like that. They would never see someone talk with such authority because everyone who came before Jesus in those synagogues did not have the weight of truth in the flesh. Did not have the source and the teaching handed down directly by the Heavenly Father. So Jesus goes into the synagogue. And this is why the voice of Christ resounded hard and powerful as it does still sound powerful through the church. It's the same voice of Christ speaking through the church, through His teachings and through sound doctrine. Jesus' voice is still alive. For He is still alive. And He's amongst us. And His voice speaks through the Catechism, through the Bible, through the Magisterium, and through these times. So therefore, when He sees the unclean spirits always trying to distort a gathering, to distort truth, to distort the people of God, and the human race, Jesus Christ, the first thing He says to the unclean spirit, which in reality, there's many unclean spirits in society today. There's many unclean spirits that don't, don't look so evil and harsh, but there's unclean spirits that look beautiful, that look attractive, and that's why it, it deceives many of us sons and daughters of God. But this is what Jesus Christ said. For nothing can ever lie to Jesus. As he hears the voice of the unclean spirit, have you come to destroy us, trying to manipulate Jesus Christ? Have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? They knew who he was and who he is even in these times. He says, quiet, come out of him. That's a powerful statement of authority. Quiet. Too much noise. Too much distortion. Too much evil. That's why the church has the voice of Christ even today as the voice as we've heard he have seen throughout the centuries and even in these times how the voice of Christ resounds even to those who are powerful. And the voice also resounds in the heart and the mind of us. So quiet now. The church and the voice of Christ sounds powerfully throughout the whole human race and society as it says, quiet those who are in favor and celebrate abortion. Quiet those who celebrate euthanasia. Quiet those who celebrate and boast about adultery. Quiet those who boast of murder. Quiet those who do others wrong. Quiet those who gossip. Quiet says, come out of those situations. Come out, he says, to the human race. Quiet to corruption. Quiet to evil ways. And that is how the voice of Christ still resounds throughout the whole world, through the voice of Christ in the church. So that's why the church condemns many things in the world that try to manipulate the voice of Christ. So in now in us, we hear the voice of Christ within us as well in our minds because being rooted in Christ in baptism and if 
and receive the Eucharist and become one of Him in the flesh. So therefore the voice of Christ we must hear within us rebuking us when we are inclined to do evil or we are inclined to hurt someone or we are inclined to separate from our Lord or we incline to not uphold the Ten Commandments. So he rebukes us and with authority his voice resounds within us but sometimes we still reject it. And sometimes we put that voice on hold. Quiet to our temptations in our heart. Quiet to the temptations of our minds. Temptations of many things. Temptations of envy, jealousy, temptations of the flesh, temptations of greed and pride. Quiet, he says, to each and every one of us. Not so much us or the people or the person, but the actions, the temptations. To those things the Lord says, quiet, come out of my loved ones, come out of my father's brothers and sisters, my daughters and sons, come out. So therefore, as God, the voice of Christ still resounds today, unclean spirits also are wandering around the world. And we have seen them, we have felt them, we see them in others in distorted minds, distorted voices, but the voice of Jesus Christ will prevail. And His authority and His teaching will prevail. So brothers and sisters, His voice is resounding and He took control of the synagogue and He took, took control of the income spirit. So now in these days, let us not despair, for He will take control and has of unclean spirits this day and with authority be in control of the human race and of our lives. So let us give thanks to God for His authority and His uh, love for us and He wants us to unite to Him the source of all truth and authority and love and mercy. Together let us profess, profess, and what we believe, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered at Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and ascended at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And through the Gospel, Christ speaks to us with words of eternal authority and deeds of healing power. Through Him, let us pray with confidence. That the Church may continue to teach Christ's truth with authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the hearts of the world leaders may not be hardened as they hear Christ's voice today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those considering the religious life may not be afraid to say yes to God's call. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That purity and respect for human dignity will destroy the unclean spirits of pornography and sexual groups in society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithfully departed may enjoy the radiant dawn of eternal life, especially Wally Wallach, the Wallach and Weldon family, and Willie Martinez, Jr. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, how powerful we place before you our needs 
and pray confidently for your help and mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. We prepare the altar and the altar. Bendito sea, Señor Dios, del universo, por este pan, fruto de aquel trabajo al hombre que recibimos de tu generosidad y ahora te presentamos. Él será para nosotros pan de vida. Bendito sea, Señor Dios, del universo, por este vino, fruto de la vida del trabajo del hombre que recibimos de tu generosidad y ahora te presentamos. Él será para nosotros de vida de salvación. Recibe, Señor, un placido de estos dones que ponemos sobre tu altar, en señal de nuestra sumisión a ti, y conviértelos en sacramento de nuestra redención por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. El Señor esté con todos ustedes. Levantemos el corazón. Demos gracias al Señor nuestro Dios. En verdad es justo y necesario. Es nuestro deber y salvación darte gracias siempre y en todo lugar. Señor Padre Santo, Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, por Cristo, Señor nuestro, que en compasión extrae a los hombres, quiso nacer la Virgen María, muriendo en la cruz, nos libró de la muerte eterna y resucitando de entre los muertos, nos dio vida eterna. Por eso, con los ángeles y los arcángeles, con los tronos y dominaciones, y con todos los coros celestiales cantamos sin cesar, el himno de tu gloria. Santo, 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 es el Señor Dios del universo, llenos está el cielo y la tierra de tu gloria, osana oh, en el cielo. Bendito el que viene el nombre del Señor, osana oh, en el cielo. Santo eres en verdad, Señor, fuente de toda santidad, por eso te pedimos que santifiques estos dones con la infusión de tu Espíritu. De manera que se conviertan para nosotros en el cuerpo y la sangre de Jesucristo nuestro Señor. El cual, cuando iba a ser entregado a su pasión voluntariamente aceptada como pan, la noche gracia lo partió de Dios sus discípulos diciendo, tomen y coman todos de él, 
porque esto es mi cuerpo que será entregado por ustedes. Del mismo modo, acababa de ser como el Carlos, y dándote gracia de nuevo pasó a sus discípulos diciendo, Tomen y beban todos de él, porque este es el cáliz de mi sangre, sangre de la alianza nueva y eterna, que será derramada por ustedes y por muchos para el perdón de los pecados. Hagan esto en conmemoración mía. Este es el sacramento de nuestra fe. Anunciamos tu muerte, proclamamos tu resurrección. Ven, Señor Jesús. Así pues, Padre, a celebrar ahora la memoria de la muerte y resurrección de tu Hijo, te ofrecemos el pan de vida y cada de salvación, y te damos gracias porque nos haces dignos de servirte en tu presencia. Te pedimos humildemente que el Espíritu Santo congregue la unidad a cuanto participamos del cuerpo y la sangre de Cristo. Acuérdate, Señor, de tu vida extendida por toda la tierra, con el Papa Francisco, nuestro obispo Edward, y todos los pastores que cuiden a tu pueblo, lleve a su perfección por la caridad. Acuérdate también a nuestros hermanos que se durmieron en la esperanza de la resurrección. Y todos que han muerto en tu misericordia, admítelos a contemplar la luz de tu rostro. Ten misericordia de nosotros, y así como María la Virgen, Madre de Dios, su esposo San José los Apóstoles, y cuanto vivieron tu amistad a través de los tiempos, merezcamos por tu Hijo Jesucristo compartir la vida eterna y cantar tus alabanzas. Por Cristo, con él en él, a ti Dios Padre muy potente. En la unidad del Espíritu Santo, todo honor y toda gloria por los siglos de los siglos. The Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look now on our sins with the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy I should enter my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by His redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. This Mass has ended. Just a few announcements before we conclude. Um, I'd like to thank all of you who are watching uh, through Facebook or our website. 
Uh, we continue to uh, give a mass to online and then communion outside at 10 a.m. on Sunday for all of those who want to receive communion and be fed by the body and blood of Christ at 10 a.m. outside. The be Eucharistic ministers outside the door here at the church. So we're heading down now to um, the last week uh, when we'll hear, we will hear from Bishop uh, Weisenberger uh, next week um, on whether what's going to happen uh, with uh, the openings of the parishes, uh, what protocols we'll have to take. Um, on February 5th, uh, uh, we will uh, know. Uh, so keep in touch with us through online and website and uh, Facebook for updates on our openings of the parish soon to come. Hopefully we, uh, we will have more uh, masses and everybody can come back as well. So uh, thank you very much. And also, uh, please don't forget to uh, be generous and your generosity reflects uh, the love of God and generous, uh, generosity of God for the finances of this parish as well, and to keep it uphold in these times of pandemic and crisis. We continue to pray for you and pray for us, um, and we remain healthy and safe, especially those who I've heard around the community that uh, have contracted COVID, and those family members, extended family members and relatives, uh, we pray for them, and may they heal fast and be uh, healthy again. God bless you, have a wonderful Sunday.